So, yeah, but then the following year, which was uh, this past winter, I was trying to keep up with cold acclimation. And, uh, you know, I, I was actually wearing, uh, I was at the, uh, you know, data entry job and I was wearing, a th uh, I think I was wearing a vest. So the vest really kept me warm. I think as long as my core was warm, I could actually, you know, manage. That's when I was, uh, you know, I felt warm, you know, except my outer extremities, you know, like my hands, th my fingers, what do you call it? Um, but I think what happened, uh, I ended up changing course, you know, I wanted to do this because I wanted to, I guess, test my ability to adapt to my environment. Um, and this was more of a, I guess it could be an external environment, um, rather than like my thoughts in my head, but I was able to, uh, but, you know, experience it. And it, it was pretty crazy just how powerful the mind and body is the fact that you can do things that seem impossible or at least you know it's what i was used to in the sense that you know when it's cold outside you cover you know put on all these layers so it's kind of doing the opposite of that and so excuse me there's this more But so the with uh, cold acclimation, it uh, became a little bit better, I would say. Uh, but I was really tested this past winter because we had a lot of rain. Probably the most rain I've ever seen in California, in terms of uh, you know as long as I've been alive, and um, so it was pretty intense. I mean. Uh, I definitely need an umbrella and because I was doing the commute to my workplace, you know, I definitely got wet and I was trying to find ways online uh, to find uh, hacks to, you know, keep myself dry and uh, let's say I did different things, but there was one time I went to work and I was just trenched, but luckily, you know, I was at their house and, uh, you know, I was able, uh, they uh, accommodated me even if I was, you know, my job wet and whatnot um but that was something that happened that was uh definitely not too comfortable i think the reason i really stopped the cold acclimation though was i there was one day i was i think i was eating breakfast and uh i think i had some raisins or something but i could feel something in my throat and that is when you start to feel like a cold is coming on you know when your throat gets ticklish and then it's like prickly almost and then it doesn't matter how much water you drink you can't shake that feeling of that kind of dryness and so what happens is your throat becomes dry and then you just keep drinking water and water and it looks like you're hydrated you know um, but it's just it gets drier and drier and it's get becomes sharper like a sharper pain and it travels from your, you know, like your palate, the top of the roof of your mouth. And then it goes farther and farther down to like your throat. And then it feels like it just disappears. It's a weird thing that I've uh, gotten several times. And uh, usually it's accompanied by a runny nose, uh, which is uh, uh, definitely doesn't taste very good, you know, uh, <laughs> when you have a runny nose. But um, the reality was, uh, I think it was after work. Um, for some reason, during the winter, we had this foggy evening, which is very strange. You know, it's like something you would see in June, uh, where we have a morning marine layer uh, that doesn't really clear up throughout the day. But this was in the middle of December, I think, where we had a very thick fog. And so there was a lot of humidity in the air. But the fact it was, you know, it was winter, so it was pretty cold. So I had this idea in my head, like, oh, if I keep breathing through my mouth, it's it's humid outside you know there's like a lot of water particles in the air that it might help and then um so there was that and uh i ended up getting sick after that so i started to realize well maybe it's not a, maybe it's a good idea if i put something warm on uh you know i don't want to catch a cold but i think it was just because i was breathing so much through my mouth that kind of exacerbated it or maybe it was already starting to develop beforehand um, but 
yeah that's I, then i started to realize uh man it's kind of cold outside so i probably should put on some uh something because uh for some reason yeah we had a really cold um winter but i guess another thing i i thought about is the fact that you know i was out during the evening and you know in the winter time the sun goes down so it gets colder a lot earlier so that was probably something that i had to adjust to in my environment but you know cold acclimation was pretty cool i have to say um but i guess you know the environment changed because when i was at school you know i was driven to school in a you know warm car and then you know i got to school and i stayed in the classroom for a couple hours whereas um when i was commuting to work you know i would be you know on the bus but then i would have to wait and then i would be walking over to work so i think i might have been exposed to the cold a bit more than uh you know when i was at vista high school um but yeah it's cold acclimation and then i've tried to, to do it with uh the hot weather cuz uh usually around july through october that is when we get the hottest weather um uh, from what i noticed the past couple years in california uh, southern california and uh that is when the opposite thing starts to happen you know during the winter people say man it's cold outside i'm freezing you know and then it changes you know uh when we get to uh july and and such where people talk about how hot it is outside and the funny thing is when there's a weather phenomenon you start to notice the people's demeanor starts to change they tend to talk a lot about the weather and that's the focus of a lot of conversations and so that's i i don't know if it's a habit or it's something instinctual um that we tend to do but it's it seems to happen where you know there's a lot of rain or there's thunder and all of a sudden people turn their attention to it uh maybe it's a sense of survival or something but um the reality was if we think about um like a uh, hot weather you know uh we had a really hot summer uh when i was working at that call center there was one day where i think it was at least over 110 degrees outside and so who it was blazing that's like the hottest i've ever i've ever experienced any sort of heat like that that was freaking insane i just remember um i would be outside uh you know i came out of work you know for a break and then so there's air conditioning but it was a dry heat it was so suffocating and it was so heavy it felt like i was on mars or something cuz how hot it was and the fact was i had to you know walk over to the sprinter station and man that that was tough but actually now that i think of it that must have been uh actually during uh june or july of last year uh but i just remember wow it was really hard to walk just over to the sprinter station which isn't far from campus but that was the most intense you know by i made sure to be conscious of how i was reacting to it cuz it's easy to say like oh man it's so hot i can't i can't walk i can't do this but the reality is all about how we react to that situation our thoughts create our reality and so the way we perceive a situation happening in our environment it will shape how we remember that cuz like let's say we uh you know react negatively to that and so when that situation happens again we remember how we reacted to it previously and it becomes a habit uh the next time and the next time and then the more you react in the same way then it becomes a habit and that's when it gets hard to shake but you have to be uh, come conscious of the way you react to certain things and so that's why i was thinking about you know like hot weather cuz personally i was the same way you know i was like oh man i can't do anything but the reality was you know adapt to that uh so this summer i have to say i've been keeping into account uh you know cuz i i didn't have a job for this summer you know i had one last summer and then i was doing a lot of outdoor stuff but this summer i've been uh you know traveling a lot and uh you know working on career development uh networking 
um, you know, working, helping at the house. And so the reality was, uh, you know, by the time it's crazy, just the past couple of weeks or so, the humidity really started to kick in. I felt like I'm in, you know, an, on an island or something, you know, uh, because I, I just feel the sweat. It's uh, not very comfortable, to be honest, but um, I think I started to adapt to that. I'd be like, oh, if I if I work too much, you know, do like the physical stuff, I'm going to start to sweat like crazy. Uh, unlike when it's a dry heat. There's a, yeah, there's a difference because, uh, you know, when I was it was like late June or so it was hot, it was warm. But as long as you're in the shade and you're doing something, then it's fine. But when it becomes until, you know, July, when the humidity starts to kick in, you could be in the shade. And even though you start to do something, you know, you start to rain, you feel like, you know, you're getting rained on or something. But um, so weather acclimation is a, a really interesting uh, thing to experience. I'm gonna grab some water. And so it's something to be aware of uh, what you think and how you react to it. I think uh, I haven't been as, uh, I guess, bold as I was before about it. But I think I'm trying to balance it out maybe or not think about it too much. You know, um, it's become more of a habit since I adopted into my life about a, a, about a two years ago, a little over two years ago. But uh, cold acclimation is uh, certainly something... Uh, uh, built my strength to the outside and really became aware of uh, how I react to the weather. Well, that's uh, how I, or that's my experience with uh, weather acclimation. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and uh, this is Random Stuff with Alex Hughes, signing off.